It'll just be a second. I'm sure you all can already hear me. <coughs> oh, boy. Voice from the strange void. Can you, uh, can you hear music? I hope. No music. Of course not. Well, give me one second. Um, also need to start the captioner. Okay. <coughs> All right. Things are happening. Uh, one second. Okay, I don't know how good anything looks at the moment. Uh, hi, I don't even have like a chatting screen to work with today. Um, I'm in my office. Uh, give me one second. Uh, this is not how things are meant to happen. Um, And I just need to adjust, I think I need to adjust the camera just slightly. One sec. <coughs> All right, hello everybody. Um, as you can see, we are not in our normal space and, and I actually have to take the headphones off um, I'm, I'm hoping that the audio that you're hearing is nice and clear. Uh, what was coming through the headphones is not. Um, whew. So, hi, Lord Portico, Heike Squared. Hello, everybody who waited out the half hour delay on today's stream and, and chose to join me today for what we are going to do, hi, was not worth it. I also, um, okay, so I'm gonna cover the, uh, the woes, <laughs> the stream woes in just a second. I will explain everything that has happened. Um, you have no captions on either channel. Um, Right. Captions should be working on VTWell Studios. They don't show on the graphic. You have to scroll down below the video, and it's, there's a box you can pop out. Um, let's see if I can get captions working on my channel, because they are not working at the moment. Um, why are they not working? Let me check my audio input device. Uh, input. Uh, 
All right. Uh, let's see. I'm hoping that that is going to work, maybe. Hello, Hannah. Welcome in. Um, OK, it looks like we've got the captions working here. Thank you all so much for um, being patient. Um, I, I, before I forget, uh, I do want to read the, um, the typical at the top of stream uh, land and labor acknowledgment. Uh, so I'm going to do that. And then I will explain why everything's a mess to the best of my knowledge. And then we're going to look at some stuff. So Virginia Tech acknowledges that we live and work on the Tutelo and Monacan people's homeland, and we recognize their continued relationships with their lands and waterways. We further acknowledge that legislation and practices like the Morrill Act of 1862 enabled the Commonwealth of Virginia to finance and found Virginia Tech through the forced removal of Native nations from their lands both locally and in Western territories. We understand that honoring Native peoples without explicit material commitments falls short of our institutional responsibilities. Through sustained, transparent, and meaningful engagement with the Tudelo and Monacan peoples and other Native nations, we commit to changing the trajectory of Virginia Tech's history and or by increasing indigenous student, staff, and faculty recruitment and retention, diversifying course offerings, and meeting the growing needs of all Virginia tribes and supporting their sovereignty. We must also recognize that enslaved black people generated revenue and resources used to establish Virginia Tech and were prohibited from attending until 1953. Through inclusive VT, the institutional and individual commitment to utprosim that I may serve, in the spirit of community, diversity, and excellence, we commit to advancing a more diverse, equitable, and inclusive community. <clears throat> Thank you for uh, being willing <laughs> to let me read that at the top of each stream. Um, <clears throat> Aha, yes. And thank you, Lord Portico, for um, popping in the VT Acknowledges over on both channels there. Um, so, yeah, uh, everything looked like it was going to be just a normal, I run upstairs, spend a little bit of time setting up, and go live. Uh, until I was walking out the door of my office with my cart to take the materials upstairs. And that was when uh, my colleague who um, oversees the space and the technology and whatnot uh, came into the department looking for me to let me know that she had just gone into the room to make sure everything was set and set everything up and discovered three people in there doing construction work <clears throat> on the room where we normally stream. Uh, and so that was about 45 minutes before I was supposed to go live. And so the cart, fingers crossed. Can you all still see and hear me? No? OK, I had a second where it went out on the studio's channel. Uh, OK, I don't know what that was. Um, Wow. I, I'm here on campus, and we got that. So anyway, uh, so we pulled the cart down here. We had considered this space as a potential when there was talk of doing some remodeling upstairs. And so I, we had at least considered it as an option um, for temporary use. Uh, but they, in the last two weeks, changed out a bunch of the technology that was on the cart. And so the Pearl, um, which is the device that we use here on campus uh, to control the stream and that I need to go through in order to go live to both channels at the same time um, and, and stuff, that device is no longer on the cart. Uh, instead, we have a Pearl Mini on the cart, um, and it's connecting remotely to the Pearl. Anyway, some technical stuff. Um, but that meant that we didn't have an immediate, like, 
I plug this in here, I plug this in there. So there was a little bit of having to figure out where everything plugged in. And then um, it, it just changed things. This device didn't have the channel already set up, so I didn't have my scenes saved on this device. Um, and for some reason, this device won't let us, it wouldn't, we couldn't figure out how to create more than one layout, which is why you're seeing the document layout instead of the full face me talking to you because I don't have more than one scene. I literally just have the one scene today, which is also why you could hear my microphone while we were on the starting screen. Uh, and the transition from starting screen to this was me literally just reordering where the graphic was to put it behind the cameras. So technical issues. I also have a floodlight that five minutes before actually going live, the floodlight burnt out. So I have my two side lights that are lighting me from the front right now because the big halogen flood that I had for this space burned out. So it's not been a great time uh, as far as that goes, but we are live and I have an absolutely adorable collection for us to look at today. Adorable, I, I don't know, it's a marketing collection from uh, like 1979 to 1985. It is a collection of materials um, that the title on the collection that an archivist gave to this collection is Sweet and Low and Butter Buds, Promotional Materials, 1979 to 1985. Um, so let me see if I can just... <laughs> um, you should have links to the finding aid for this collection on both channels. Um, so yeah, I, I've, I've actually got the folder on the table right now is actually not part of that collection. Uh, it is one folder of material from a different collection that is related material. Um, and so we're going to glance at this first and then we'll dive into the promotional materials. But also, how is everybody? Uh, thank you so much for joining me today, um, especially given all of the technical difficulties that uh, were in place getting this going today. And also, if you follow the Finding Aid link, you'll note that the logo of the site it goes to is different. Uh, because over the course of the last two weeks while I was on vacation, Virginia Heritage officially rebranded, and it is now Archival Resources of the Virginias. Um, and so their actual website, their main website, has changed. Instead of being vaheritage.org, it's now arvasarchives.org. Um, and that change is partly due to the fact that it is no longer just Virginia. Uh, the site also includes archives in West Virginia now as well. So it is the archival resources of, Vir of the Virginias. But let me do a little bit of background here about the collection. Uh, well, more specifically, I'm going to read the very short historical note, which is, the Cumberland Packing Corporation has been operating for over 50 years and mainly produce sweeteners and flavor enhancers. The company started producing Sweet and Low as a sugar substitute in the late 1950s. Butter Buds began production in the 1970s. Um, you can learn more about uh, Sweet and Low, Butter Buds, and specifically the Cumberland Packing Corporation um, by checking uh, just a general internet search, Wikipedia had some information about them. Um, but what I found really interesting was I never had thought about what company makes Sweet and Low. It, never something that I had ever considered, but also I've never even heard of Butter Buds. 
before I saw this collection. Both products are still available. Um, also, hashtag not sponsored. Uh, just, <laughs> I am getting no compensation from the uh, Cumberland Packing Corporation for doing this stream. Um, but uh, according to Wikipedia, Cumberland Packing Corporation is a privately owned company located at 2 Cumberland Street in Brooklyn, New York. Founded in 1945 by Benjamin Eisenstadt and is best known as the manufacturer, distributor, and marketer of Sweeten Low, the saccharin-based zero-calorie sweetener sold in pink packets. Um, <clears throat> it began as a tea bag factory prior to the invention of Sweeten Low. Uh, using modified tea bagging equipment, the company was the first to sell sugar in packets breaking tradition with sugar bowls that were common on restaurant tabletops at the time. That does note that it needs a citation. Um, so there's a little bit more description there about the history of the company uh, available on Wikipedia just for general primer information like this. Not a terrible source of information. There are links if you want to see where they pulled their data from. And there's also a link to the official website. Um, Sweet and Low has a website, and Butterbuds has a website. Um, you woke up around 6.15 with no power. That is not a great start to the day. Um, but yeah, so Cumberland Packing Corporation, which does not sound like a food manufacturer, um, makes these two products. And uh, so... The first item I'm going to look at, this is from the culinary pamphlet collection, which we've looked at before. Uh, no, no, no connection to the Cumberland Mountains or Cumberland Gap. No. Um, and so it just had a couple of items in here, but these items are related to both products. So I thought it worth just glancing at them. Also, I, I'm doing my best, but... Um, glare and whatnot are going to be a little bit harder to control today. Also, I don't have a monitor. I have to wait for the stream. So there's a delay between when I hit the zoom in button and when it actually shows me what, what I'm doing. Um, I'm going to see if I can angle this a little bit. I don't know if this is going to work. Might be too close now. <laughs> All right. Um, so this first one is uh, a little booklet about cooking with sweet and low. I'm trying to see. There's a tiny little logo in the lower right corner um, that I note right now is behind me because no green screen today. Uh, so let me move this to the side over here. Um, it's a very distorted logo. I can't read the, the small text, but it's Farm Journal Family Test Group. Um, there's some text above that, but I, I don't know what it says. But um, copyright 1965, Sweet and Low Division, the Cumberland Packing Corporation. And so this is going to be... Uh, essentially a recipe book about how to cook with sweet and low. And um, today, when we think of sugars and sweeteners and whatnot uh, that come in packets, um, you've been to, you've, you've likely been to a restaurant. I can't assume that everybody here has been to a restaurant. Um, you've likely been to a restaurant that, um, and if you haven't, please let me know so I can do a better instruction. Uh, but generally in, in restaurants, it, and especially in diners, uh, but most restaurants that have sit-down dining of some sort will have a little, um, a little piece. I don't know what, it, what it's actually called, but a, 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 like a a container of some sort that has a bunch of little packets of sweeteners in it. Um, and it'll have everything from sugar in the raw 
uh, Sweet and Low, um, <clears throat> Stevia. <clears throat> um, I don't remember all of the different kinds, but it'll it'll have sugar. So generally, the white if it's a white packet, it's just it's processed granulated sugar. If it's a brown packet, that is the sugar in the raw brand, uh, sort of less processed sugar. Um, the pink packets are typically sweet and low, but they could be a generic that is the same type of sweetener as sweet and low, so saccharin based. Um, there'll be a sugar caddy. That's a good name for it, Key Squared. I don't know if that's actually what it's called, but um, uh, that conveys the meaning. Uh, and there'll be a yellow packet. I don't remember what brand name uh, does the yellow packets and a blue packet. So that there's sort of this um, standardization based on the brands, which is consistent internationally and, and is somewhat surprising. Like that is how ubiquitous Sweet and Low is, is that when you see a pink packet in the sugar caddy on your table, kind of no matter where you are, you expect that it is Sweet and Low or a generic version of Sweet and Low. Um, and, and the same with the blue and the yellow being tied to specific brands and specific style of sweetener. Um, so let's, let's see what we've got here. I know, um, <clears throat> so the green packets, the green packets, uh, let's see, hang on. Um, Green would be stevia. Yellow is uh, the one that I'm trying to think of. Splenda. And blue is uh, equal. There's actually, like, it's not that hard to find out. Um, so when Splenda came out, uh, the yellow packets, when that came out, there was a big push of them trying to explain um, how you could use it for baking and substitutions. And here we also have, from 1965, a booklet that tells you how to use Sweet and Low for baking. So here we've got... Um, some dog-eared pages, so I'm just stopping here because they were dog-eared in here. Um, apple pie, total, total calories of pie, 1360, one-sixth of a pie for 227 calories. Prepared with sugar, uh, one serving is 303 calories. Uh, and it calls for five cups of sliced apples, uh, assuming five medium-sized apples, uh, two teaspoons of tapioca, which in this case would be the thickener. Um, two tablespoons of sweet and low, which is eight packets. Uh, some cinnamon. Two recipes of dieter's pie crust, which is below on the same page. Uh, roll two-thirds of the pie crust recipe to fit an eight-inch or nine-inch pie pan. Arrange apple slices in crust and sprinkle tapioca. Sweet and low, and a little cinnamon over the top. Roll out remaining pie crust, perforating the top, and arrange over apples. Crimp edges securely, moistening with a little water if necessary. Bake at 400 degrees for 30 minutes or until apples are tender. Um, so in this case, completely substituting all sugar. There, there's no, like, use some sugar and some sweet and low. Uh, which I know, like when Splenda came out, there was essentially their baking instructions for most Splenda items is half sugar, half Splenda. Um, this appears to just be a one-to-one -one substitution of the sucrose sugar or the sucrose sweetener for sugar, which is interesting. Uh, let's see what else we've got. 
blintzes, fluffy tapioca pudding, uh, custards. <clears throat> For a baked custard, um, one egg lightly beaten, one teaspoon of sweet and low, four packets, one cup of skim milk, a half a teaspoon of vanilla, and some nutmeg. Combine the beaten egg with sweet and low. Slowly add skim milk and vanilla, blending well. Pour mixture equally into two custard cups. Top with a sprinkling of nutmeg. Bake in a pan of hot water in moderate oven, 325 degrees Fahrenheit, about one hour, or until the mixture does not adhere to a knife. And it makes two servings. Um, I don't know how common these are today to get... Uh, sort of these little recipe booklets from companies, these were really common in the past. I don't know that I see them quite as much today where this is an entire cookbook, a pocket-sized cookbook that gives recipes to try and sell their product. Um, and I, I just personal experience, can't think of that. I, I can't recall seeing that a lot uh, currently. If anybody has, I'd be interested to know. So here's the first of our Butter Buds items. <clears throat> and I'm actually going to take the little cushion away because I think we can do top down. This isn't uh, glossy. Again, I don't know a lot about Butter Buds. I've never had them. Um, I did not know they existed until I started looking at materials for this stream. Save cholesterol, calories, and cash. Baste your bird and all the trimmings with Butter Buds. Natural butter flavor granules. Is anybody actually familiar with Butter Buds? Have you had it? Can you describe the experience if you have? Um, my best understanding, <laughs> yeah, buttery goodness. My best understanding of Butter Buds is uh, my brain says this is possibly similar to like Molly McButter, which is something I'm familiar with as a product. But I don't know. Have a happier, heartier holiday dinner with new Butter Buds. Natural butter flavor granules. 99% less cholesterol than butter. 94% less calories than butter or margarine. Costs much less than butter too. Just shake or mix the contents of one packet, one, one half ounce, eight level teaspoons, with one half cup of four ounces of hot tap water to make four ounces of delicious liquid melted butter flavor. <clears throat> butter buds should be re refrigerated when reconstituted. Note, as a completely fat-free fat -free product, butter buds should not be used for frying. Produced in Wisconsin for Butter Buds Division Cumberland Packing Corporation. So this, this is a t small little, um, like a, a little takeaway that would probably be uh, on the counter at the grocer, like a little free, uh, take one of these, um, that, or possibly uh, meant to be placed next to the product on the shelf. Uh, as a freebie takeaway, um, and it is very specifically recipes that would fit in an American Thanksgiving dinner meal. So we've got um, roast turkey, uh, a turkey about 12 pounds, fresh or frozen, but not the pre-basted type, uh, a tablespoon of salt, a te two teaspoons of pepper, two packets of butter buds, one cup of hot tap water, dry white wine or apple juice, and some stuffing. Um, 
and then it gives instructions on how to cook the bird. Uh, but in those instructions, dissolve butter buds in the liquid and sprinkle cavity with about three tablespoons of mixture. Uh, and then a bit later, place on the rack in a roasting pan and brush with more of the butter buds mixture. Uh, then we're going to roast it occasionally pan, uh, with uh, basting with pan drippings and the remaining butter buds. So, uh, and then turkey broth, gravy, bread stuffing, um, yams or sweet potatoes, which is a, a common side dish um, for American Thanksgiving meals, uh, buttery Brussels sprouts, and creamless creamed onions. Um, so essentially the same thing as with the sweet and low, where they're giving you a variety of dishes, um, recipes, all specifically for how to use this product to replace something that you probably already use, which is butter or margarine, because margarine would have been big in the 60s or 70s. Um, butteriest Thanksgiving ever. Uh... Yeah, hashtag not sponsored. Yeah, I it it does it is still available. I had never heard of them, and I don't know how analogous they are to like Molly McButter, um, dehydrated butter flakes. Think like instant potatoes. Ooh, okay. Um, you think you'd prefer actual butter? Yeah, probably. More like the instant potatoes of butter. So I don't know, like. I don't actually, in my brain, I don't, I can't, I know M Molly McButter exists. I don't know what it is as far as a product. I know it comes in a little shaker and goes on things, but I don't, I don't know because I, it's not a product I use. My grandparents used it and it's been more than a couple decades since I last encountered it as a product. Um, this one I had never encountered. And so, um, more shelf stable and easier to transport, quite, quite probably. It's dehydrated, may not be made with real butter. Where, where did it say that? I don't think it said that. Now I have to look. It doesn't say that anywhere. Oh, you're being sarcastic, gotcha. Um, the other item in this collection, uh, hang on, let me zoom out. Um, sorry, I know the shadows are weird today and the lighting is not great and the, uh, I have shelves of art behind me. And also, I don't know if you can hear the constant air handling system noise. I'm just gonna do my best with the, the available space today. Um, the Healthy Gourmet Recipe Booklet featuring Butter Buds. 100% natural, butter-flavored granules. Oh, I love this. It's Butter Buds brand. 100% natural, butter-flavored granules. Contents equal the flavor of two pounds of butter with 94% fewer calories than butter or margarine. Uh, three ways better than butter. Save calories, save cholesterol, save cash. See also, 1960s. You're looking for an ingredients list. That would be interesting. <clears throat> Beat the butter blues. Dear friends, butter flavor without cholesterol, calories, or high cost? New Butter Buds comes close to it. Take a look at the chart on the facing page. Butter Buds is 100% natural, instant butter-flavored granules with 99% less cholesterol than butter and 94% fewer calories than butter or margarine. Butter Buds is also much lower in price than its flavor equivalent of, those, of these high-fat spreads, which will certainly help today's overstretched budgets. 
As a registered dietitian, I am quite aware of the health hazards of consuming foods high in serum cholesterol and calories, particularly for people with heart-related diseases. Butter Buds is a product that meets America's healthy dietary goals without sacrificing flavor. Note, I am not a registered dietitian. I'm reading what it says on the page. Uh, <clears throat> you and your family no longer need to deny yourselves the pleasure of eating foods with a buttery flavor. The recipes in this booklet have been designed with both health and taste in mind. With them, you and your family can save cholesterol, calories, and cash, and really enjoy doing it. Sincerely, Gail L. Becker, R.D. Butter buds contain maltodextrin, a carbohydrate derived from corn, uh, butter, asterisk, salt, butter flavor, rice starch, soybean lecithin, annatto, and turmeric. What does the asterisk refer to? Interesting. So it uh, starts with a corn-based carbohydrate, uh, adds a dietarily insignificant amount of fat and cholesterol. Gotcha. So a corn-based carbohydrate, actual butter, salt, butter flavor, uh, likely because when you dehydrate it and then reconstitute it, you lose some of the flavor because you lose a lot of the fat. So they had to put in a chemical flavor as well. Uh, rice starch, uh, which is probably a stabilizer. Soybean lecithin. Um, I'm not 100% certain what lecithin is used for. I know it's in a lot of products. I would guess also a stabilizer. Annatto and turmeric. Uh, so the turmeric is definitely for a yellow color. I have no idea what annatto even is. Uh, now I have to look that one up because I don't know that one. And I'm totally guessing about the food chemistry involved here and what these ingredients are actually there for. Um, and turmeric, I'm fairly certain, is there primarily for yellow color. Um, the butter flavor is to combat the loss of flavor from dehydration and re reconstitution. I know those. Um, uh, the starch and the lecithin, I'm assuming, are stabilizers, but I don't know for sure. The starch might actually be there, the rice starch might be there as a base for the dehydration to occur on. Um, I, I'm, not, I'm not certain. Annatto is an orange-red condiment and food coloring derived from the seeds of the Akiote tree, native to tropical America. So that would also be there for color. And, and yeah, Elixi beat me to that. Um, interesting. So as easy to use as one, two, three. One, mix one packet, eight level teaspoons with one half cup, four ounces of hot tap water. Cap securely, shake well to make four ounces of melted butter flavor. Pour over, three, pour over or stir into any food you cook. I'm so curious now. I'm, I'm reading this and as someone who has never used this product before, um, it, it's interesting to me, it comes in a packet the same way, um, the same way Sweet and Low does. The same way like sugars and sugar substitutes do. It comes in a little packet, which totally makes sense from this former tea bag manufacturer to be putting things, dehydrated things, into little bags. Um, I want to try it on popcorn to see if it ends up coming out, like be, tasting like movie theater butter on, on popcorn. That's where my brain goes when I look at this and it, talks about reconstitute it into liquid butter flavor. I, I want to see how it is on popcorn. And they don't mention popcorn. 
pour Butter Buds liquid over cooked vegetables, fish, noodles, rice and pancakes, or mix in casseroles, sauces, gravies. Sprinkle dry from the packet on eggs, steaks, spaghetti, mashed potatoes, and popcorn. They do mention popcorn. They say to put it on dry. Interesting. Uh, the Butter Buds liquid should be refrigerated for best results used within three days. Note, because, but, because Butter Buds is practically fat-free, it cannot be used for frying. Uh, but then we get some uh, main dishes. Bluefish amandine, sesame chicken, linguine al pesto, um, some scallop potatoes, buttery herbed vegetables, uh, colonial orange wine cake, eggs benedict, Butterbud's bran muffins, and then some camping cuisine, breakfast stew, corn on the cob in husk, vegetable chicken foil dinner, Brunswick stew, and chicken with rice. Interesting, but I do want to get to the actual like marketing materials that are the focus of today's stream. That was one folder from the culinary pamphlets collection. Um, next, we're going to move on to sweet and low. For best results, do not consume what. It didn't say that. I don't know. You're, sorry. I thought it had the logo on both sides. Clearly not sponsored. <laughs> uh, so the first thing in this collection, I'm in the pink with Sweet and Low brand, the perfect sugar substitute. <clears throat> the first thing in here is this little, um, I don't even know what this is. It's, it's like a document case. It's definitely um, of a material that would make it weather resistant. It's like a little bag, but it doesn't have like a shoulder strap or anything. Um, so I'm not 100% certain exactly what it is. But it, it, I think it's a bag to carry some stuff around in. Adds a dietarily, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm reading old comments now. Uh, so there's that one. Then we also have, oh yeah, it's definitely swag. No shoulder straps allowed in the 80s. Crushes you. You are correct. So it must be an underarm bag for like, it's a gigantic bag, but like to care. Anyway, yeah, it, it's huge, whatever it is. Um, this one. Is, is definitely like a document case. Um, big enough to hold a 45, but has a luggage tag on it. It's got the Sweet and Low logo. Um, definitely was like a case that they could take some uh, marketing materials with them to a conference or for a presentation to a potential customer. Um, just had to show those because they're in the collection and if I was ever doing an exhibit, we have actual artifacts. Um, also, they don't fit well in boxes. But the main part of the collection 
It's yeah, it does look like it's for your record collection, but it's not big enough for an LP. It, it's it would have to be a, a collection of 45s because uh, it's definitely not big enough to hold an LP. Um, anyway, main collection. We have the actual display that that Butterbuds pamphlet was meant to go on. Try and hold it up so you all can see. Uh, and then we'll look more closely at it in detail. But because I wish today would be a great day for me to be able to switch scenes, wouldn't it? Uh, anyway, let's, let's take a look at this because this is meant to go on... Um, well, first, let's look at the bottom. This is meant to go on a little cardboard display that would be at the grocery store and sit in the middle of the aisle. That's what these slots are, so that they can stand on the back of an open box that would contain the product in front of it. Um, having worked in retail, I actually know how this was intended to function. Uh, And so it, it's meant to stand up. Um, it's presently been folded for a long time, so it, I don't think it would stand very well. Uh, but this is definitely a Thanksgiving time display. Uh, it's got the little box up here, free holiday recipe folder, save cholesterol, calories, and cash. And that same pamphlet we were just looking at, it's got multiple copies of in here for people to take. Um, baste your bird and all the trimmings with Butterbuds Natural Butter Flavor Granules. I'm not surprised that they like using um, lots of words, pardon me, lots of words that start with B uh, to advertise the Butterbuds stuff. Um, but yeah, it's an actual like grocery store display. Um, this is from 1979. I know that because there's a little code at the bottom uh, that ends with dash 79. Um, and that indicates when it was from, which is more of a date than you get on a lot of things. So um, I'm very appreciative that they put a date somewhere on it. Ooh, and if all recipe folders have been taken, Please write for your free copy. Uh, and you would be writing to Brooklyn, New York, the headquarters of the Cumberland Packing Corporation. <clears throat> I believe that's actually the only item in this collection from Butterbuds. Even though Butterbuds is in the name of the collection, the majority of this collection is Sweet and Low. Ouch. So let's take a look at folder one. And folder one is 1979 display. Oh, wait, no, we got some more, more butter buds here. Display and Promotional Materials, 1979. Um, prepare to be amazed or scared? Yeah. I'm sure it'll be fine. It'll, it'll just be absolutely fine, right? Um, do -do -do. Make sure that that took. Good. Uh, so another Butterbuds display, 1979. So same marketing campaign. Finally, 
a butter flavor breakthrough. Natural butter flavor. And of course, it's a breakthrough. So the box is breaking through uh, the, this, this paper. You know, it has, it has broken through. Um, it's, I love how, um, it's sort of monochrome. I don't know. It's, it's, the Butter Buds logo is yellow and blue. And so those are the only colors in the ad. Uh, you were too early? Yeah, you were too early. Um, I, I actually like that this entire ad is, is just blue and yellow. The words up top are blue. <clears throat> it's got the yellow stripe in the middle here to highlight the things they want you to know about the 99% less cholesterol than butter, 94% less calories than butter or margarine, four ounces of butter buds is equal to the flavor of two pounds of butter and costs much less. Those are like their selling points, the things they want to emphasize. Uh, it's got a little bit of yellow here on the box, but again, they're using the, the brand yellow as a highlighter to highlight the spots on the box where it touts those supposed benefits of the product. Um, and then the only other spot that gets color is the actual product logo at the bottom of the ad. And everything else is black and white. And I actually think that that is it's an, a very intentional design, and I think it's a good design decision as far as a marketing design. So it's very simple, and I mean, aside from the cheesy, it's a breakthrough, let's have the box break through, um, their intentional use of placement of color makes a lot of sense in this ad. And I am not a marketing major, and I, have no authority. That is just me doing analysis on my own based on my observations. But um, <clears throat> the other item in here will be fun to show on stream. Right? We will look at it. Um, I have to see where it starts. OK, so yeah, this one is sweet and low. But look how many calories you'll save. <clears throat> I'm going to zoom out to try and get as much top to bottom of the page as I can, since this is going to be interesting to try and share with this document camera. Um, I'm now vamping uh, my words because I'm waiting for the video to catch up so I can know how far I've zoomed. Come on. Just waiting on the stream because I don't know what what we're going to see here in a second. Are we zoomed out as far as we can? Maybe we are zoomed as that seems strange. OK, fine. I will physically zoom if I have to. Sorry, this camera is supposed to be able to handle 8 and a half by 11 pages. So that's I'm a little confused. Oh, thank you for the hydrate portico. I will indeed hydrate. Um, <clears throat> so this is an entire marketing campaign for Sweet and Low. Uh, at least I think that's what it is. 
1979, I switched from sugar to sweet and low because I care. Uh, signed Barbara Minty. Most doctors agree with supermodel Barbara Minty because it makes good sense to put less sugar in your life. Get more out of living. That's why wherever she goes on fun-filled weekends and every day of the week, Barbara goes for Sweet and Low. Advise your patients to switch to Sweet and Low brand granulated sugar substitute and make the switch yourself. It makes good sense. For a generous supply of free pink packet samples, write samples, Department AMA, 60 Flushing Avenue, Brooklyn, New York, 11205. Recommend Sweet and Low because you care. Data on ingredients and nutri nutrient content available on request. Again, hashtag not sponsored. I know, I advise your patience. So this was possibly intended as a, uh, this, this first part here possibly intended uh, to be marketed to medical professionals of some sort. I'm going to see if I switch like this, if it might work better for this item. Sorry. It's all chemicals. I wish, I wish I could show it sideways. All right. <clears throat> so as you can see, a variety of, there's various photos with whoever Barbara Minty is, a supermodel that apparently was a supermodel in 1979. Um, I am not familiar with her work. Uh, and then Sweet and Low at the bottom. But this is, this is clearly an advertising campaign proposal for a print campaign uh, where they would be placing ads in magazines. So here is an example of what that uh, ad campaign um, would look like in a magazine. Uh, and so here we've got most dietitians agree, most dentists agree, so targeted with slight changes to the text depending on who the market for the magazine is. Um, and then some examples of print media that they are recommending to advertise in. Uh, diversion for physicians at leisure. Um, the Journal of the American Dental Association, Journal of the American Dietetic Association, and the Journal of the American Medical Association. Um, you just ate some locally made ice cream from the farmer's market near campus. Oh, they have such good ice cream at the farmer's market. Um, and here's a close up of that. Uh, spread that we just saw again with Barbara Minty. And then some more, I guess, magazines that they recommend advertising in Mademoiselle, Seventeen, Cosmo, Glamour, Red Book, Farm Journal, Family Health, Broad Campaign. We want all people. To, to use sweet and low, apparently. I mean, technically everything is chemicals, isn't it? As far as like what we eat, chemicals of some sort, all throughout. Redacts any further information about chemicals by order of section, section 31. Um, and then it looks like we've got some store coupon uh, design ideas here. Uh, cool off with the perfect diet drink. Quench your thirst the cool, refreshing way. Enjoy iced tea with sweet and low. A perfectly delicious way to put less sugar in your life. Get more out of living. Switch to iced tea with sweet and low. 
the perfect diet drink. Again, hashtag not sponsored. Um, and then it's a 15 cent off store coupon. <clears throat> uh, one for talking about hot and cold drinks, fruit and cereal. And it's of course a picture of some coffee. Um, but yeah, this is like an entire accordion spread of an ad campaign proposal. I don't know who prepared the proposal. Um, it just says Cumberland Packing Corporation, which would have been who they were giving this proposal to. So I don't know what ad company actually put this together. Uh, cents off coupons on over one, or sorry, over 15 million boxes of Chex cereal will sell millions more boxes of Sweet and Low throughout 1980. Uh, <clears throat> so, Covering the back of the Chex cereal box with coupon for Sweet and Low. Another example of an ad spread in a magazine, uh, along with some suggested magazines of where they might want to advertise. I don't know if you can see the ad spread. Uh, Let's see. Why we can do this? Although the thing that I don't understand about this particular ad is magazines aren't that wide. I d none of these magazines. These magazines are portrait. This is a landscape. I don't understand. You're trying to write a letter of commitment to a project. Don't take your snickerdoodle coffee ice cream sandwich from you. Oh, gosh. <clears throat> uh, sweet and low and Lipton uh, instant tea tie in for another great promotion in 1980. Uh, so suggesting partnering with Lipton. Some more magazines to advertise in. This was back in the golden age of print media with, the, with these magazines. Um, some examples of ads for Sweet and Low with Lipton. <clears throat> Go skinny sipping with delicious Lipton instant tea and Sweet and Low. It's the perfect diet drink. <clears throat> Add Sweet and Low to your Lipton 100% instant tea and you have a diet drink that's tasty and refreshing. So come on, sit down, put your feet up, and go skinny sipping today. Perfect offer. Get this pocket carrier. Carries a pint packet of Lipton Instant Tea and four packets of Sweet and Low. Send 25 cents for postage and handling. Okay, we, we need to look at this part of the ad. <clears throat> I need to... Just wait a second and make sure that you all can see what I'm seeing. Down here in the bottom corner, we have the Lipton Tea. We have the Sweet and Low. <clears throat> we have a sleeve to put Sweet and Low and Lipton Tea packets into and carry around in your wallet or purse. actually an interesting idea from a marketing standpoint and from a like let's make it so convenient that people will always carry around this product with them I don't know that I've ever wanted to carry around a hot tea bag or sorry an instant tea bag and a sweetener in my wallet but Maybe people wanted to? That one just strikes me as unusual, but then I don't drink iced tea or, or that much hot tea. Um, then we've got a promotion with 
Knox Gelatin. Uh, Knox is a major brand of uh, unflavored gelatin uh, in the U.S. This double-barreled 1980 promotional tie-in with Knox Gelatin will really move Sweet and Low with a national advertising campaign in leading consumer magazines that will reach over 45 million potential Sweet and Low customers. And promotional material including a multi-page recipe folder and tear-off pads for a special offer that'll bring them back for more. <clears throat> All right, this is where we get, uh, and there's more of this later in, uh, in the collection, if I'm not mistaken. This is a proposal for a TV ad, which I don't think I had ever really considered how TV ads would have been pitched. Um, there's no escaping gelatin, that's true. I don't know, I didn't really watch a lot of Mad Men, so it's probably my fault that I had never really considered uh, how TV ads were pitched, but 10 second TV spot, switching. All year long, this hard selling TV spot will show people that millions have already made the switch. Wherever you go, they're switching to sweeten low instead of sugar. Isn't it time you switched? Make the switch to sweeten low because you care. And so the visuals there, if you can't really see them that well, um, I'll try and do a little description here. Uh, there is an iced tea glass and a cup of coffee <clears throat> and next to them is a bowl with sugar packets and a bowl with sweet and low packets. Um, and two people both reach out. A man's hand is grabbing a sweet and low uh, packet and a presumably a, a woman's hand because, uh, you know, presumably man's hand, presumably woman's hand. The two hands, one of them a bit thicker with some veins showing rougher hand, uh, definitely portrayed as masculine. The other one, slimmer with manicured nails, definitely portrayed as feminine. Uh, the feminine hand reaching out and touching the man's hand, not the sweet and low packet, but um, I'm unclear as to what the action is in that shot, uh, whether maybe he reached for the sugar and she guided his hand over to the sweet and low, because the next shot is a close up on the guy's hand uh, holding an open sweet and low packet, and then he sprinkles the sweet and low onto a half of a grapefruit, which is neither the tea or the coffee that was in the initial shot. I wasn't expecting the grapefruit. That was a surprise. The last shot has a cup of coffee in it. It's not the same coffee cup as the initial shot. Uh, the sugar bowl is gone. And there is a bowl of cornflakes with blueberries and a half a grapefruit with a maraschino cherry on top that he's sprinkling sweet and low on. I, I have no doubt that that probably actually was a TV commercial that aired on television in the, set, in the, the 1980 uh, year. 10 second TV spot called Holiday. Throughout the holiday season, this appetizing TV spot will remind people it's a good time to switch. Holiday times are good times. The perfect time to switch to sweet and low for cooking, baking, all your sweetening needs. Switch to Sweet and Low because you care. Um, and that one's mostly just pictures of food and the last shot, somebody's pouring some Sweet and Low into a coffee cup full of coffee. 
Uh, then they've got a 10 second spot focused on iced tea. <clears throat> Let's see, we've got some um, 60 second radio spots. <clears throat> Recorded musical intro, 28 seconds. Wherever you go, switch to sweet and low. Slender and trim, the light look is in. And people who know have made the switch to sweet and low. Put less sugar in your life. Get more out of living. Switch to sweet and low. Wherever you go, switch to sweet and low. <clears throat> Fade music out, or under and out. Uh, <clears throat> I love that this next one is in all caps and double spaced. Did you realize the average American consumes about 100 pounds of sugar a year? That's good reason to switch to Sweet and Low brand granulated sugar substitute. Sweet and Low is perfect for sweetening hot and cold drinks, even cooking and baking. So why not put less sugar in your life and get more out of living? Switch to Sweet and Low, brand in the handy pink packets or economical bulk package. Available at store name. <clears throat> Not bad for sight reading, I, I, I am going to say. Anyway, they've got some radio spots. Uh, oh, here we are at the very end. <clears throat> Wait, what is... So, uh, Stiefel Raymond Advertising Incorporated is apparently the company that prepared this proposal for the Cumberland Packing Corporation. Um, ad campaign for Sweet and Low continues emphasis on young adult market. The 1980 advertising and promotional campaign for Cumberland Packing Corporation's Sweet and Low brand granulated sugar substitute has been created to sustain the momentum of the aggressive 79 ad pro program aimed specifically at the 18 to 34 market, says Marvin Eisenstadt, executive vice president of the Brooklyn-based firm. This year, through our advertising and promotional efforts, we will continue urging young adults to put less sugar in their lives, get more out of living, but we'll make an appeal to consumers of all ages as well. The Sweet and Low campaign, created by Stiefel Raymond Advertising Incorporated New York Agency for all Cumberland products, will include broadcast media in all major markets with 10-second TV and 30- and 60-second radio commercials, scheduled for airing throughout the year. Additionally, a year-long four-color print campaign will reach millions of customers in such magazines as Glamour, Cosmopolitan, Mademoiselle, Seventeen, Diversion, and Weight Watchers. Full-page, four-color ads have also been scheduled in leading professional journals to encourage the sampling and recommendation of Sweet and Low by doctors, dentists, and dietitians. Uh, and then we've got a marketing schedule and ends with a lovely ad for Sweet and Low that is apparently... meant for the people that make Sweet and Low? I'm not sure. But we won't linger. There's more quite interesting things to see. <clears throat> How's everybody liking the um, <laughs> marketing materials so far? Let's see, we got like 15 minutes left, wow. Uh, 1980 advertising, that's documents related to the stuff that we were just looking at. Um, let me see, let me see. Recipe books. Oh, this is interesting. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this, but it's interesting. <clears throat> July 22nd, 1980. Uh, this was to E. Henry St. Clair Company, Roanoke, Virginia. Subject 1980 quotas, sweet and low brand products. 
At the halfway point in the year, you may be very interested to know what kind of bonus you already have made on the sales of all sweet and low brand products at Bernard Food Industries. Your 1980 total, total dollar sales, sales quota was, uh, let's see, 10,000. Sales volume, it, it doesn't have a figure. Just determine which bracket your sales volume fits. If you're doing well, congratulations. If you need to build up your sales for the next six months, now is the time to begin. I certainly hope to give out some nice big fat checks in December. Our fall promotions should be a big incentive for increased sales during the last half of 1980. Thank you for your interest and continued cooperation. Hope you make it a great year. I just, like, thought it was interesting to, to see, like, people selling Sweet and Low would get bonuses from the company for selling Sweet and Low. Uh, and so if they had five to $10,000 in sales, they got a bonus of $100. 10 to $25,000 in sales, a bonus of $200, uh, on up to over $200,000 in sweet and low sales, they'd get a bonus of $4,000. So not just uh, marketing to consumers, but working with retailers to ensure that the retailers were incentivized to sell the product. <clears throat> we have another smaller little accordion about um, 1980 ad campaign. We already looked at a bunch of 1980 stuff. I'm not gonna not gonna look super close at that one because what we want to look at, what we've been waiting for, what we absolutely cannot miss from this collection are the 1981 and 1985 promotional materials. <clears throat> 1981's promotional campaign was titled Get in the Pink. I'm going to switch the camera back. Hold, please. I apologize for any shifting of the screen. So example of an ad. Here's a mat slick of the best-selling newspaper, the circular and circular advertising that will be working for you throughout 1981, got pictures of the product. Get in the pink, switch to sweet and low, put less sugar in your life, get more out of living. Um, some various examples of like ads that you'll see uh, for discounts on the product. Um, here's one that actually says, and butter buds. <laughs> like, oh. Yeah, we forgot. We also have this other product. Um, I want to get past the black and white stuff because, as you can imagine, an ad campaign called Get in the Pink has a very particular uh, color scheme for its advertisements. <clears throat> Most doctors and nutritionists recommend that patients adhere to the U.S. dietary guidelines and avoid excess sugar in their diets. Um, <laughs> very, very, like, detailed. This is probably meant for those, like, medical magazines because it's a lot of text and talks about U.S. dietary guidelines. Um, helping America stay in the pink for over 22 years. But then we get the more commercial ad. 
Get in the pink. Switch to sweet and low. Put less sugar in your life. Get more out of living. America's number one sugar substitute. And we've got these people all dressed in pink riding a four-person bicycle across a pink field with a pink sky in the background. Um, it is very pink. It's like bubblegum pink for the most part, except for that one person in the fuchsia. Um, and then, you know, just little images of sweet and low toward the bottom. <clears throat> Are you at the roller rink? Get in the pink. Get in the pink. Switch to sweet and low. Put less sugar in your life. Get more out of living. I do not know if the people in this ad campaign are people we should know. I have no idea. Yeah, this was the warning from earlier. Be amazed by the pink. Um, like, I don't know. Are these people that were, are they just models? Or are these actual, like, people? They don't say anybody's name, so I'm guessing these are just models. Uh, here we have an array of five people, all dressed in pink. I love... You know, the, this blonde guy here in the, uh, the sweater vest with the pink tie and the pink dress shirt and the pink sh dress shorts. Um, yeah, just get in the pink. Switch to sweet and low. Hey, we have a person of color in this one. That's the first time that's happened. Oh, no, she was in the bicycle one, too. <clears throat> All hail the pink. Why pay sky high for sugar? Get in the pink with sweet and low. Get more out of living for less. Um, that one's not quite as fun. But we also have 30 second TV commercials for the Get in the Pink advertising campaign. His business shorts, indeed. Get in the pink. Switch to sweet and low. Put less sugar in your life. Get more out of living. 30 second TV commercial. Get in the pink. Uh, wherever you go, everyone's responding to the new sweet and low commercials. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. But if it's sky high, shouldn't it be magenta rather than pink? Because I want you to be able to see the, uh, the stills for the proposed uh, TV commercials. I would have to go back and like find some old tapes of broadcast television from 1981. Pa uh, this might be a proposal for the 82 ad campaign um, to see if these actually aired. I imagine they probably did. Uh, the first, oh gosh, the beginning of this ad is, um, a guy in pink holding up a slide as a woman in pink slides down it with her legs in the air, get in the pink with sweet and low. At, and then it literally says, get in the pink with sweet and low again. Uh, you know, it, she slides down the slide and then she's sitting with a couple of people in roller skates on the ground. They're all in pink. Then it shows sweet and low. Then apparently these people are angels in the sky because they're walking on clouds with pink pillars and a pink background behind them, uh, dancing through the pillars apparently. Uh, looking right, feeling light. I guess they're feeling light because they're walking on clouds. Um, they're on teeter-totters. And then they're on the four-person bike. Wherever you go, you call your sugar sweet and low. Um, put less sugar in your life. Get more out of living. Switch to sweet and low. Get in the pink with sweet and low. B 
beat the high cost of sugar with Sweet and Low brand, the perfect sugar substitute, available at all food and drug stores. Um, there's also a lifeguard, apparently, but I thought they were in heaven. I don't know. Basically, just people having fun in an environment that's all pink, except they're apparently walking on clouds at one point. Uh, then you get get in the pink balloons as an as a TV spot, 30 second commercial. Wherever you go, everyone's responding to the new Sweet and Low TV commercials. Get in the pink with Sweet and Low. Get in the pink with Sweet and Low. Looking right, feeling light. Wherever you go, you call your sugar Sweet and Low. Put less sugar in your life. Get more out of living. Switch to Sweet and Low. Um, so this one starts with balloons. Uh, and then the balloons fall on the people who are standing on the pink floor and are dressed in pink, and then it shows sweet and low. And then it's the shot of the people on the ground with some of them wearing roller skates. And then there's five people standing behind a packet of sweet and low. Uh, then a woman on a swing, and then the teeter-totters, and then the four-person bike, and then three women around um, uh, presumably a nerdy lifeguard because he has on that, that um, cap. Uh, and then a woman who you can see her bare shoulders and her bare lower legs behind a picture of Sweet and Low hovering above clouds, which is clearly meant to imply that she might have no clothing on behind there uh, because you can see her bare shoulders um, while actually revealing nothing. Uh, and then... I guess romantic goofiness of uh, a woman and a guy on the stairs to the lifeguard tower, and then the slide picture, and then five adults on a jungle gym? I'm really confused, but people are having fun, and it's all pink. <gasps> Thank you, Portico. I got started a little late, so I'm just going to skip through a couple of these, and then we'll finish. This one's more comprehensible. This one's a 10 second commercial. Um, wherever they go, people are getting in the pink with Sweet and Low. Isn't it time you switched to Sweet and Low? And it's 10 seconds, so there's just four shots. Uh, a feminine manicured hand reaches for a packet of sugar and then picks up a packet of Sweet and Low instead, apparently, suddenly, the bowl of sugar switched to a bowl of Sweet and Low, and uh, the feminine hand picked up a packet of Sweet and Low. Interestingly, the um, cream carafe and the coffee mug that were in the initial shot turned pink when the bowl switched to Sweet and Low. Uh, they pick up the packet, they open it, and they pour it into the coffee that is now in a pink mug. <clears throat> so a few more of the little, like, 10 second commercials. I love that the ad agency's actual, like, proposal for this ad campaign is on pink paper because the campaign is called Get in the Pink. And so they did their campaign and, and they wrote it up. The, the radio ads are on pink paper. Apparently, uh, oh, I get it. The reason why it was repeating Get in the Pink with Sweet and Low was apparently they have a jingle for Get in the Pink with Sweet and Low. I'm not familiar with this jingle, so I can't sing it for you. I don't know what it sounds like. Uh, but the radio spot is, put less sugar in your life and save cash and calories. Just compare the price of an 8-ounce package of sweet and low with a 5-pound package of sugar. Both have the same sweetening power, but sweet and low saves you cash and over 7,900 calories. So why pay extra money for extra calories? Switch to sweet and low brand granulated sugar substitute for all your sweetening needs. 8-ounce bulk, bulk packages of sweet and low are available everywhere. A couple more radio ads. And then lyrics to a 30-second radio jingle. 
<clears throat> again, I don't know the I don't know the tune, so I can't sing it. Uh, get in the pink with sweet and low. Get in the pink with sweet and low. Looking right, feeling light. Wherever you go, you call your sugar sweet and low. Put less sugar in your life. Get more out of living. Switch to sweet and low. Get in the pink with sweet and low. Get in the pink with sweet and low. They wrote an entire jingle. And then an actual, I think this might actually be like a mock-up of an actual magazine page. Um, it's not from a magazine because it's completely blank on the bottom and it has the um, uh, marketing campaign like asset number at the bottom. Uh, but this is what that would actually look like in a magazine uh, with the five of them and the balloons and yeah. It's very pink. Uh, and 85, a couple years later, and they're still at it with pink. Um, I love this, this magazine page example. Is literally just a macro image of a sweet and low packet and the number, er, er, and the date, the year, 1985. Uh, but they went all in in 1985 on um, advertising with Kathy Lee Crosby. I don't know who Kathy Lee Crosby is. <laughs> but apparently she was a big enough name for them to center an entire ad campaign around her. <clears throat> So we have a 30-second TV commercial entitled Restaurant that opens with on-screen text that says Kathy Lee Crosby for Sweet and Low. And her lines are, I love to celebrate and I love a party, but this looks like trouble. <laughs> we're just talking about serious, or we, we are talking about serious trouble. And that's why I love Sweet and Low. And so do 29 million other people. It's been around for years and it tastes fabulous. That's why you see it wherever you go. Now Sweet and Low isn't going to keep you from getting now Sweet and Low isn't going to keep you from getting into trouble, but it sh can sure help you get out of it. And then uh, the jingle starts wherever you go, Sweet and Low and it shows the, the logo. I don't know who Kathy Lee Crawford is, so I can't even try to do an impression. Um, but the next one is Mirror. She's in um, a dance outfit, it looks like. And her lines in this one are gooey chocolate chip cookies, butter pecan ice cream, mashed potatoes with country fried gravy. I love them. And that's why I love Sweet and Low. If you're going to splurge, you got to pay, right? This makes it a lot easier for me and about 29 million other people. It tastes great, it's been around for years, and has just two little calories per teaspoon. Now you could pay a lot more for another sugar substitute, but why would you want to do a thing like that? And then the jingle starts. <clears throat> if anybody does know who Kathy Lee Crosby is, feel free to share, because. This is the third TV spot with her. Um, in this one, she's wearing a swimsuit, a pink one, of course. Uh, 5,317 miles of jogging, 3,765 laps in the pool, 10,412 sit-ups, and a little help from my friend, Sweet and Low. It really helps me stay this way. It helps me and about 29 million other people. It's been around for years, it tastes great, and it has just two little calories per teaspoon. But you know why I really love Sweet and Low? Because I really hate sit-ups. And then the uh, jingle starts. Your internet at work has decided to go out again. Oh dear.
worried about getting in trouble and avoiding a pack of sugar, but has a whole dessert on the table in front of her. That's because apparently just having sweet and low there uh, means that that dessert is no longer full of sugar. Um, Wikipedia informs you she was a tennis player who became an actor in a lot of things <laughs> that you have no memory of from the 1980s. Starred as an Air Force officer in an NPC miniseries that had Rock Hudson as the president from the United States. I don't know. I was, I was relatively young in the mid-80s, so... Uh, let's see. <laughs> yeah, they really went all in on her. Like, there are full-page print ads featuring her. Like, she was their headliner for their... 1985 ad campaign. <clears throat> Just looking to see if anything stands out as like we want to end on this thing. Because uh, despite having started a bit late today, half an hour late thanks to things out of my control, um, I do need to be wrapping up. Um, we will do... Yeah, we'll do this one. That doesn't feature a person. Let's see. <coughs> This one features a variety of diet sodas. And these are all the small, oh no, wait, these are 12 ounce cans. They just are, I don't know, they're short, thin 12 ounce cans. Our 12 ounce cans today are, are fatter than this, but anyway tab, which, um, so if you're unfamiliar with tab, tab is a cola, uh, but it is specifically only a diet cola. It does not have a non-diet version, but it is a cola. Uh, then we have diet Sprite, great lime and taste. Um, interestingly, all of these Sodas mention NutraSweet on, on their cans. NutraSweet blend, NutraSweet blend, uh, Diet Coke, and then we have Diet Pepsi and Diet 7-Up. And then we have Sweet and Low. So this to me is trying to target a competitor uh, because all of these sodas are sweetened with NutraSweet, not with Sweet and Low. Um, and the text of the ad is, what diet product is poured more often than any other? No, it's not Diet Coke, Diet Pepsi, or Tab. In fact, it's not even a diet soft drink. It's Sweet and Low. And over 29 million people use it over 30 million times a day, every day. Concerned people who watch what they eat and drink. Why? Because it has only two calories per serving and the taste people like so much, they've made Sweet and Low the most used diet product ever. Sweet and Low, the one you know. Sweet and Low, 30 million times a day. Diet Coke and Tab are registered trademarks of Coca-Cola Company. Diet Pepsi is a registered trademark of PepsiCo Inc. Sweet and Low is a registered trademark of Cumberland Packing Corp. That's the small text at the bottom, the fine text. <laughs> a tab? Can't give you a tab unless you order something. Is that from something was not worth it? I mean, that, I think that's great, but is that like a quote or did you just make that up. I'm curious. 
because um, I have not heard that before. But it's hilarious. Anyway, I'm going to end on this ad where Sweet and Low was trying to uh, compete with diet sodas. Um, oh, it's from Back to the Future. I don't remember it. Interesting. Uh, anyway, I, um, wow. This has been an interesting stream, given just how completely uh, I don't know screwball that seems like a good word um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it it's gonna work it's gonna be wondrous uh, talking right at you here with you know no document cam I think Quite possibly. I, I might be full face. Um, yeah, this stream today, I, I'm happy it happened because, um, as you know, uh, what was meant to be my last stream before I went on vacation, I had to cancel uh, because I was not feeling well that day. Um, and then I was off for two weeks, so we didn't have archival adventures. Um, and so I very much wanted to make sure that today's happened. I'm very happy that we were able to make it work despite the fact that the room where I'm supposed to stream from um, was unexpectedly unavailable today. But we got things working um, despite sound issues and equipment issues and the floodlight burning out five minutes before going live. Um, I think I still had fun. Thankfully, it was not a very, like, serious, uh, uh, very intensive collection. We basically saw the entire collection today. Um, what we're going to be looking at next week on stream, hopefully upstairs, um, is uh, what was originally scheduled for three weeks ago. Um, that being the Herschel, Somerville, and Marset materials from our rare books collection. Those are three 19th century women scientists, and I had pulled together things to do a stream, and then that was the one that got canceled. Um, that is planned for next week, uh, so it is n definitely not something that I'm skipping. Um, I have everything ready for it, and we'll be looking at that next week. And then the week after, I've got uh, the Frank Robeson papers, um, which had something interesting about them. And we'll find out in two weeks' time. Uh, let me go ahead and see who we're going to raid today and um, go ahead and, and make all of this happen. Um, do, 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 do. But yeah, thank you all for joining me. Um, da, 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 da. Yeah, I think we're going to pop in on the aquarium because um, they are live, and that's always a good way to end the day, which for me, this would be sort of ending the day. Um, you know, I don't remember Key Squared. You'll just have to check in uh, in a couple weeks, and, and we'll find out together. Um, yeah, there we go. No. Uh, All right, I'm going to uh, set this raid to go. I'm going to um, get us switched over to an ending screen. Um, and again, thanks, everybody, for joining me, uh, despite all of the very interesting um, technical issues today. It was a fun one. I hope I see you again next time. Um, and just you know, continue enjoying. Um, Yeah.